you've been in the clinic, you've seen uh, the both of us do a test called Finkelstein's for de Quervin's. So you're gonna put your thumb in, make a fist, and you're gonna bring your wrist down. And a lot of the time there's pain through here, okay? So you can even do this test at home, and if this test is painful, then these exercises will be for you. So how to stretch through that tendon there, okay, is we're gonna do something called radial deviation. So it's important to have a surface so that your wrist is hanging off the edge, and you're just gonna stretch through there and bring it down, okay? So it shouldn't be insanely painful. If it's about a one or two, you're feeling a stretch, that's totally fine. This is the maximum stretch that we're getting into that tendon. Just a little bit of anatomy for De Quervin's tenosynovitis. So we're looking at two tendons here, the extensor pollicis, and then we also have the abductor um, pollicis, okay? So this is called the anatomical snuff box that you can see right through here. All right, so this first exercise, we're going to be putting pressure to mobilize the abductor pollicis longus, okay? So what Natasha is going to do is she's going to put pressure on that abductor tendon, okay, while it's relaxed, and then she's going to bring it up into extension. Very good. So extension is the thumb coming towards her. Very good. So she's gonna do this about 10 times. So she's putting pressure on that abductor pollicis as she extends about 10 times. And then what she's going to do after she does that 10 times, she's going to extend and see if she still has pain in through this region here. So this is a strengthening exercise for the abductor uh, pollicis muscle, okay? So Natasha's gonna use an elastic band. It can be a hair elastic, elastic band, and she's gonna bring her fingers away from each other. And then she's gonna oppose, this is called opposition, and then she's going to come back and extend that way. She's gonna come in nice and slow and controlled, and then she's gonna extend. Okay, so this is strengthening radial deviation. This is that motion in that plane right there, okay? So if you have a small weight, you can use that. I want something that doesn't have a wide grip on it. We're just using a tool that we have in the clinic, um, but not, not like a can or anything like that. It has to be um, a nice and thin tool or a, like a one or two pound weight, okay? So what Natasha's gonna do is she's gonna go into radial deviation and then she's gonna come up. And then she's gonna go nice and slow and controlled on the way down about three seconds. And she's gonna come up. And then again, three, three, two, one on the way down. And then come back up. This is a progression uh, to intensify the radial deviation. So you can use an elastic band. Natasha has it. She's stepping on it right there. She has her elbow nice and rested on her thigh. So she's coming up with that. And then she's coming down okay and then she's coming up and the resistance is on the way up and you can even see her tendons working in through there okay and then come down so about 10 times again for this one as well